What works? Language literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. What are the language literacy and numeracy demands of the training environment? How do we learn? Through reading, writing, speaking and listening. Language literacy and numeracy, or LLN skills, are not a separate issue. They are part of how all learners learn. They are integrated into vocational training. So logically, the LLN demands of the training environment should be no higher than the LLN demands of the training specifications and the job you are training learners to do. Otherwise, your training and assessment will be a higher hurdle for your learners than the skills required in the job. There are four areas you should look at that can make a big difference to the effectiveness of your training and assessment practice. Written materials. Training methodology. Assessment methods. Physical environment. Give your learners clear learning materials written at the right LLN level. Well, basically using um, work documentation is a very critical part of um, good teaching, using authentic materials, not just using workbooks that have been designed for training and assessment, but to actually look at incident report forms or other types of oh and documentation. It could be a whole range of annual leave forms, all sorts of things that people need to fill in as part of their normal work. It's a good opportunity once you've done the course to really go back and look at the learning materials that you're using. And in some ways, you may not be able to influence that too much if the RTO has provided them for you, but you can supplement that. You can provide other pictures and videos, DVDs, a whole range of different strategies to enhance those learning materials. Other things you can do are to look at the size of the font that are in the materials. Are they tiny font, which is discriminatory for lots of people who can't read it, especially if it's in a new language to them. So changing the font, making it uh, more plain English as a document really helps with the learning materials. And so that's a good outcome. Typically, people who write a lot of materials for language and assessment may not have a clear understanding about the levels they're writing for, they might be pitched too high. They may have no pictures on the pages or diagrams. And so a lot of text is very confronting for people to read. And so it's not suitable for a learner uh, of a lower level. So they need to accommodate and modify some of that language. They're just simple things like um, changing wording, changing um, the layout, removing all the unnecessary wording within a question and just getting to the point of the question. Sometimes you'll have a, a whole lot of lines underneath the question, but then you might only want them to have to write one sentence, but because they visually see all these lines, they think, oh, I've got to write all the, or, you know, I've got to fill up that whole box, when in fact they don't. Training methodology. Consider your training methods. Do they support learners with LLN needs? Remember, these learners may lack confidence and may not want to show when they don't understand something. Teach the language of the workplace. When you introduce new terms and unfamiliar language, say them clearly. Then write them on the whiteboard so that learners can copy them down. Break tasks down into logical steps. Check that learners understand one step before moving forward. For example, ask questions. Ask learners to retell the information or to demonstrate what they have learnt. Provide examples of workplace documents learners will need to use and provide plenty of opportunities to practice written skills. Provide models of workplace interactions. For example, watch videos or practice role plays. Create an active learning culture in your classroom. Encourage learners to discuss things, ask questions to clarify meaning and get more information. Get them involved. Provide encouraging feedback. Observe your learners for non-verbal clues that could indicate they have not understood. Maybe confused looks, never asking a question or leaning over to ask a neighbour. If you think a learner may be having difficulties, Sit with them individually when the class is doing another activity, but don't draw attention to them. Assessment methods. Check the LLN levels of your assessment materials too. 
Follow the guidelines for written materials. Clear layout, plain English, and the LLN level matches the level of training specifications and job. Choose a method of assessment that doesn't require the learner to use higher LLN skills than required in the training specification and the task. For example, instead of essays, written projects, long written questions and answers, use observation, short answer questions or oral assessment. We do need to test for underpinning knowledge, but maybe there are other creative ways we can do it. We can do a verbal question and answer. If we had someone that was struggling with writing, uh, we could video them. We could uh, interview them and take a copy of that interview and that will be documented and go on files so that would meet requirements. So there are lots of different ways that we can look at a different assessment strategies. We can ask someone to demonstrate the task, not just give them reams of paper to fill in. And that's more practical in real life. Physical environment. The physical training environment can also affect the quality of your training, especially for learners with LLN needs. Not a lecture style classroom arrangement. Arrange the furniture so that everyone can see and hear easily, no one far up the back. Create the sense that all learners are involved in the group. Not noisy, unless the activity requires this.